Hey, it's Soleil, and this is episode 184 of the Orange Pill Investor, and today is earnings for MicroStrategy. So today I want to talk about uh, about MicroStrategy a little bit, but in relation to options and IV crush, which is the phenomenon where implied volatility will collapse after the earnings report because there's all this anticipation about what's going to happen. Are they going to meet expectations, not meet expectations? How's the market going to react? So in general, implied volatility will collapse after earnings, and then it will gradually increase to the next earnings report and then collapse again. Um, I don't do any price predictions. The stock will either go up, down, or sideways. But I do want to kind of uh, go in and check the long call options that are short dated. So I'm going to call that anything under 90 days, which would be before the next earnings call. And some long calls that are after the next earnings call, because I want to see if IV Crush only affects the near dated options or if it's going to affect the leaps as well just to try to, get a, try to get a sense for whether it makes sense to wait until the day after earnings to buy these leaps, or since it's so far out, uh, days to expiration, it really just doesn't matter whether you buy before or after earnings. However, anything that's short dated, so this Friday, next Friday, within the next month or whatever, I absolutely would not uh, buy any long calls that are short dated because you, you think, oh, well, I, I'm going to guess that the price is going to go up. Well, you not only have to guess the direction, but you also have to guess so well in the right direction that it compensates for the decrease in implied volatility. And Tasty Trade is kind of nice because it will give you the IV rank, which is, I don't know if it's something that Tasty Trade came up with, but theirs is a little bit different. It's not exactly the average implied volatility, but it's it's kind of like, okay, over the last 52 weeks, where does the implied volatility for MicroStrategy today rank in that list? And in general, selling options above an IV rank of 50 places you in the top half. I believe the, the max it can be is 100. Um, so it's either, you know, in the hundredth percentile, you know, anywhere from the first to the hundredth percentile. And so 36 really isn't that great. So as an option seller, this would not be like totally juicy. Now, anything over 25 is kind of, you know, pretty fairly tradable. And Bitcoin and MicroStrategy are so volatile just in general that the options prices are, are fairly desirable almost at all times. Um, however, I, I could, if nothing happens to the price of MicroStrategy, it could be that the premiums tomorrow will not be as, uh, as enticing. So that will be something to watch out for as well. And but before I even get into that, it, it's Thursday, so let's let's call this uh, Thanksgiving Thursday or Give Thanks Thursday or whatever. Um, I I <laughs> I can't believe that I'm actually celebrating. Where the hell is it? Can't believe that I'm actually celebrating 2,100 followers. This is ridiculous. Like a month ago, I was going to be celebrating 1,200. <laughs> and punter Jeff tagged me in a post and was like, all right, anybody, you know, if anybody wants to generate some yield on their MSTR shares, especially after the split, if people with 10 shares end up with 100, you know, tagged me in that. And, and um, I'm kind of like, why, why is my phone blowing up? And before I went to bed that night, I, my, I got like 300 followers that day and 
I'm like, holy crap, this is amazing. And then I woke, woke up the next morning, it was like 1800. Uh, so in less than 24 hours, I, you know, I, I, I scraped up like 1200 followers over seven months of, uh, just ramming content down in people's throats. And, uh, then within a week it was up to 1200 or excuse me, 2100 up from 1200. So big shout out to Jeff. And I think, um, in the, in that spirit, um, in this evening, maybe I'll do a post, actually a bunch of posts and I'm just going to, you know, repost a bunch of other content, uh, people's contents that I've been binging and, uh, just stuff that I think, and it may or may not be Bitcoin or stock market related, but, uh, you know, spread a little love. So be on the lookout for that. If you're interested in, in, uh, some other accounts to follow or some, some videos to watch, etc. But back to micro strategy. So let's just take a look at the calls dated for this Friday. These I think should suffer the most IV crush. So let's just, let's, let's say you're a complete degenerate and you wanted to buy this 1535 strike. And please understand that this is not financial advice. I, and I'm an option seller. So I view all option purchases through the lens of a seller. So when I'm, when I'm selling this, these options that are just to this Friday, I'm licking my lips. Cause I'm like, no, nobody has the slightest idea what the price of micro strategy is going to do. They could have a good earnings and the market relax, reacts negative to, negatively to it. They could have a shitty earnings, but maybe they beat the expectations and the market reacts positively to it. Market is completely irrational and nobody has the slightest idea what's going to happen. And so when I, you know, if I'm selling this, I'm just licking my chops. I'm like, okay, yeah, pay me two grand for this. But um, I actually don't sell any covered calls over earnings because I'm so bullish on micro strategy in general that I just can't take the risk that any particular binary event might trigger some kind of rally. So I take off, you know, four days a year. It's not a big deal. Um, but real quick, Market Chameleon is a really good tool for tracking implied volatility. So that IV rank that I was talking about, this is this is why MicroStrategy's IV rank is not that great right now. And Market Chameleon uses a little bit of a different metric. There's is MSTR IV30. So that's implied volatility over the last 30 days instead of, uh, I think MicroStrategy, excuse me, Tasty Trades. IV rank, I believe, is for the, over a year. But in general, <laughs> this is this is like completely not what most companies' implied volatility chart looks like. This was the big spike, so this makes sense. But usually, kind of something like this is what normally happens before earnings. So the this would be kind of like the implied volatility baseline, and then it creeps up after earnings or before earnings and then collapses after earnings. That's what Ivy Crush normally does. And some stock tickers you can see very pronounced, you know, you'll see big increases and then very pronounced drops. But something happened here after this earnings report, this was when the price jumped from like, I think it was like 500 to 1,000 or something. And then not long after that, it was at 1,500 and then 2,000. So that's what this big spike is. So Ivy Crush does not really look like it happened here, which kind of makes sense because it didn't, it didn't elevate. So there wasn't, I don't know if people just didn't really give a shit about MicroStrategy's earnings, but, and here <laughs> implied volatility was just kind of collapsing from this big spike. So it didn't really even get a chance to elevate prior to earnings, but maybe we still got an earnings crush here. And again, up to the present, there's just really nothing happening here. I don't know if there's just not a lot of anticipation. Uh, that does not mean that there won't be a violent reaction. This could go way up or way down, or it could just be a nothing burger. Uh, 
I don't generally make predictions, but if I was the type of person to try to do an earnings play, generally what I would do would be I would either sell a put and out of out of the money put, or uh, sell an out of the money call. That combination is actually called selling a strangle, but <laughs> selling naked calls are extremely dangerous, so I don't even bother with that part. Um, there's also you could sell iron condors. You could you could pretty much sell any kind of credit spread before earnings if earnings, excuse me, if implied volatility is increasing before earnings. However, this this is just not really a great candidate. So um, I don't even really do much of that anymore. But even if I did, this microstrategy chart is terrible for that type of strategy. So I just wouldn't bother. But micro, uh, Market Chameleon is a great resource if you're the type of person to try to do some uh, some earnings plays where you, you want to uh, short volatility uh, before earnings and then capitalize on implied volatility collapsing. And then you should be able to buy that contract back cheaper. And so that was the long way of <laughs> explaining why I want to see if these call prices are going to collapse much. Um, and so each option strike itself has its own implied volatility. So this 1535, basically at the money, call has an implied volatility of 123 1540 is 126 it's probably just going to uh, back to 123 i'm assuming as we get way higher okay it's climbing so i'm just going to revisit and this isn't going to be apples to apples unless microstrategy literally just does nothing and opens tomorrow at at the same thing that it closes for. But I'm going to take a look at this implied vol these implied volatility numbers and just the amount of premium that you can get around these prices. So at the money is going to give 43 bucks, which is about 3% of $1,500, just under 3%. 124 implied volatility. Let's go a little bit deeper in the money. Let's go down to like 1400. That's going to cost you 141. Implied volatility is down is is at 148 150. It just flashed. Let's go way out of the money. Let's go up to like 1700. That'll cost you 475. Implied volatility is 134. So I will just come in and check these, these strikes out tomorrow. I'll go like 170 above the price. And what did I check? 1400 and then I'll check like $130 below the at the market price and see. So this expiration date will have the most effect from earnings crush. So let's go out to something like 100 days. This is just past the next earnings call. At the money will cost us 332. Applied volatility is 97. What did I go down to? The 1400 strike. Cost us 385. Implied volatility is 97. And I went up to 1700. Cost is 266. Applied volatility is 97. All right, now I'm going to go to the farthest out that I can possibly go. At the money is going to cost 74,300. Applied volatility is 89%. Go to 1400. 89% implied volatility, price is 778. And oh, I forgot to do the 3,800 strikes because those are the ones that I generally try to buy. Um, I feel like I get the most bang for my buck 
as far as how much delta I can buy. So let me just go back and check the 3,800 strikes as well. But this one's 88.9% applied volatility. It's going to cost 69.8. And let's go all the way to the top of the chain. So if I wanted to buy these leaps, it would cost me 36 thousand nine hundred bucks implied volatility is 87 which ones i think i have some that are way cheaper than this let's go to february because that's at least 180 days out Let me go to the top of the chain here 3800 strikes cost 94 applied volatility is 97 and then let's do the nearest eight ones. This is it's gonna be like, like a penny or something. Yeah, this is kind of this is almost meaningless way up here. I mean, there's one person asking a penny and there's no bids. But just for yeah, implied volatility, this is nothing. There, I don't think there's any valuable information to get at that strike. Let's try twenty four hundred. There's at least some bids and some asks here. At the twenty four hundred strike, it's gonna cost us twenty six cents times a hundred. Implied volatility is 287%. That's hilarious. All right, so I'll come back tomorrow after earnings and check out all of these options prices and see how much implied volatility collapses and how much it matters to these prices and compare that to the long DTE options and see if long dated suffer the same types of uh, price fluctuations see if that see if ivy crush is actually a threat to the leaps all right i think that's it be good joe